Hello everyone, hey, well, the Charles here, and today guys, I'm going to review a Mega Bloks Dragons Universe set released in 2011 as part of the Rise of the Predators wave. And to be more specific, it's going to be Azure Striker, one of the Alliance Spiders. So of course the box features the usual uh, blue background for the Alliance, the Dragons Universe logo, uh, information right there, parts, set number, name. Of course, the drawing here, which is quite cool, with Azure Striker firing and uh, making its place in some type of uh, orange background, and of course, the pod which pops out of the packaging. On the side, the QR code that can be scanned with your smartphone. On this side, a close up shot of the speeders in a uh, 3D model uh, picture, I guess it's so. On the back, another 3D model, uh, this time featuring both the speeders and the uh, character, but as you can see, uh, well, the, the guy is not on his vehicle, and he is called Private Arminus also. And then the six little sets, or small sets, released this way, with four uh, primal dragons and two speeders. That said, time to move on to the instant booklet, quickly. One side is about the instructions of the speeders in five steps, but as you can see there is multi multiple parts. On the other side you have the parts list, how to uh, put together your character or your figure, and then also a nice little alternative build as you can see, which is uh, quite interesting, and we are going to build this thing uh, at the end of the review because it's quite quick and well, this means the review will be totally complete. And now let's move on with the first part of the set, which is a new mold, and it's the pod. Right there, so the pod is a fully new, is a fu fully new mold, as you can see, in comparison to the old pods released in 2010 and in the first wave of 2011. As you can see, the color scheme is trans blue for the upper part and silver for the lower part. You can also notice that the Alliance logo is colored in a silver color. Obviously, there is tons of little details all over the place, as you can see right there on the upper part, and also on the lower part with this type of grids, little details right there. Uh, also, you have to know that these parts are symmetrical, this means that uh, if you look on the rear section, you can, on the back, you can see the Alliance logo once again, but this time it's not painted, painted excuse, me, excuse me guys. You have four studs and a pin all on the upper side, and uh, well, nothing, uh, nothing here apart from two jet reactors, but the nice thing is that if you open the pod, because of course it can be opened in half, you will notice three studs right there, which are of course useful to put the figure in here, in there, excuse me guys. So it's quite useful to put the figure in the pod, and well, yes, quite interesting. And that's all for the pod, so really full of details, new mold, are really great if you have my opinion. Then it's time to move on to the Alliance figure, which is a Captain Mold. This means he's going to have a little visor on the side of his uh, helmet. For the rest, it's the same part. The only difference is, is well, the only difference is the color shell, which is obviously silver and uh, well, kind of metallic blue. It looks really great if you want, if you want my opinion with the silver parts on the shoulder pads and the blue, uh, the metallic blue on this part of the. Arm, uh, arms, yes, and also on this part of the helmet, so on the upper part of the helmet and on the lower part, it's well painted, no problems in terms of paint job, you can see the work insignia on this uh, shoulder pad, and the Alliance logo on the other one. So really great, and for those who do not know the articulations of these figures, well it's quite simple, you have a ball joint here which allows you to make some movement like that. You then have the rotation point on the elbows, which allows you to move the things up to 90 degrees, a little less, the hands can turn freely, the head can be moved up, down and on the sides, if you, as you can see. You have only to push it over the armor part, but you can do it if you push a little. And then the pelvis part can be moved, turned on the side, which is quite useful for uh, dynamic poses. Then you have ball joints for the legs, once again, right there, and rotation point for the uh, knees, which can be turned less than 90 degrees. The guys also comes with a new weapons mold, as you can see right here, which is quite cool, with two handles uh, to hold the gun, and of course the handle right here. 
and you have to turn the laser in, in there, of course. And also a shield, classic Alliance shield, as you can see. And you can put this thing on the back thanks to the hole. Of course, it's a figure full of details. That said, let's move on to the Azure Striker itself. And as you can see, the old speeders uh, all got some type of uh, already built frame, some big frame with power cores and stuff like that, studs, uh, unders and stuff like that. Here it's not the case because we're going to use just this part, which is, well, a little complicated, but not as specific as the one used on the old speeders. So you can see we have uh, 8 studs here, uh, 12 studs there, and 2 clips on the side. We're going to link some parts on the rear section, so it's going to be a little, uh, well, a simple plate, this type of L-shaped part with studs on this side, and two uh, slope bricks with studs on top of them, which, which are going to be quite useful. Then I'm going to take this part, so a studs, well, some plates, once again, this plates which got studs on top and on uh, the rear section, which are quite useful, an inverted slope part. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to take the instruction booklet, so I'm sure I'm not making any mistakes, even if it's quite easy. Then you have, once again, a plate, plus this transparent part, which will be helpful to make uh, kind of like an overwing, eff an overwing effect, or uh, kind of like a stand. This part kind of serves the same purpose. I'm going to put the fin on the part on the back. Also, the seat part, which is a new mold, if I'm correct. Here. And finally, well, not really finally, but uh, the uh, spider's head, which is a new mold, quite cool, as you can see. I think it's supposed to be kind of like a dragon's head. And the handles, which are made with these parts, right here. We are going to link the parts here. And then the wings, which are made with three parts, as you can see. Notice that the white parts got once again studs on top and on the uh, under it, if I can say so. So this part got a, a, silver, a silver brick with a, um, a clip, unlike the uh, left side, which is just a normal plate. We're going to see later on what is the purpose of the uh, clip. And finally, I just have to link the guns. So you might have already seen this type of molds in, the master, in, my, in my Master Dragons reviews, and also this uh, part right there. Here. And there. Here we go. And the Azure Striker is finished. So I'm going to do a little turn around. So as you can see, it's a little uh, longer than the previous speeders. Right here. Here is a comparison size with the Alliance Soldier. Here you go. So now we're going to use the clip to link the weapon. And now we just have to put the Alliance Soldier. So I'm going to move his head up change the position of his hands, like that. And excuse me guys, just let me put the figure on the spiders, and here you go. So, uh, I'm going to do a little sum up of uh, the speeder, and then I will build the alternative model, which is uh, really uh, simple. Like that. So, uh, first, well, first, let's talk quickly about the pod itself, which is really uh, quite cool, full of details, new molds, and quite interesting because you can put 
uh, the soldier in there and he will not move so it's, it's quite uh, cool uh, so say I have no nothing really to talk about uh, the, the pod except for this uh, great qu qualities because it doesn't, it doesn't really have any drawbacks if you want uh, my opinion then you have the, uh, well, the set itself, I can say so, so first the figure, uh, we can complain about the fact that it's not a new mold and also the fact that the shoulders, the, well, the, yes, the shoulders, the knees, excuse me, the knees are still uh, quite limited in terms of articulation, but once again, that's the only drawbacks I can find with this figure because I really like the color shame, I think it's uh, great and original, uh, while the head is well painted, there is no problem on this point, and also it comes with a shield and a weapon which is quite cool, it's a new mold, so seriously, it's a great little package, package, yes, the figure with great details and nice articulations, and his shield weapons and nice color shame. Then you have the speeder, so the color shame is mostly uh, silver, white, and uh, blue, and trans light blue, I think it works perfectly uh, well together, the only problem might be the fact that the white is mostly put on the rear section of the model, and you can't really see white on the front section, so maybe if the eyes of those, well, of the head uh, would have been painted in uh, white, it might have looked a little better, but seriously, it's just a little drawback, once again, uh, it's not really a big problem, because the color shine really looks good uh, like that. Then you have the part section, which I think, which I find pretty great in my opinion, because uh, well, you have uh, many new parts like the seat, uh, the weapons here and there, and the fin also. So I think it really looks good. Excuse me, guys. I will just come back. So yes, uh, I'm going to. Uh, yes, yeah, so excuse me, guys. I just have to. to uh, my car just make his way in my room, so it was a little disturbing. So, yes, uh, the part section is great because you have really uh, tons of new parts and interesting parts which can be reused on other models or mods, for example. So, you have the fin, for example, the seed, the dragon's head, the two guns on the front, the trans blue part right there, the fin here, so, so uh, full of, of interesting parts which can be reused in your mock. Then you have the construction, which is not um, amazing, but at least you have something to build, so it's quite cool. Uh, it's also a little fun, so, so see, nothing really to add. It's okay. Then you have the articulations or the gimmicks. So there is, well, apart from swooshing your model around, make it fly around your room, you can't really make anything with the uh, as your striker. Well, you can move up and down this part or the wings also, if you want to uh, move their position, you can. But apart from that, it's a little limited. But once again. It's a speeder, so it's not really supposed to uh, make a, a ton of, uh, of things. And it works uh, quite great. And finally, you have the design. So the overall design is good. Uh, the only little problem I have with this model is that when there is no figures on it, it looks a little empty and also it looks a little flat, in my opinion, because you have the front part, which is really big, with the big speeder's head. But then, as you can see, it's really flat on this section. Uh, 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 well, it's really flat. But when you put a figure on it, it uh, really looks uh, better, in my opinion. But apart from that, it looks good. Also, a little complaint is that you have these two studs on the back of the station. I think they are just here to cover the silver part. And it's a little... Um, well, it's a little... It could have been improved, in my opinion, because you can still put something on this uh, stud. So, for example, some uh, trans light blue parts to make some jet reactor. Or, for example, this part but in a uh, trans light blue and on the back of the of the part of the well on the back of the ship it could have been really looks uh, it could have it could have looks good so uh, my only drawbacks are the fact that the without any pilot the ship looks a little long and flat and also uh, that there was nothing to cover the holes on this section and overall it's a great little speeder so it's not perfect because like I said there was some problems here and there for the color shame or the design but overall it's a great speeder it's really complete and you can really have fun with it and now that it's that said I'm going to build the alternative model quickly so it's really simple first I'm going to put of course the fig off then the two lasers on the sides also this part right here and finally, I'm going to put the gun off, I'm going to take these two parts like that. I'm going to put off the silver bricks on it, because they will not, they will, they will not be useful. Then I'm going to put the white part in there, 
and air and finally I'm going to use this clips and put the part like that And as you can see, for now it doesn't really uh, hold well because it's because of the of the weight of the front part, it uh, just fall off as you can see. So that's why we're going to use a figure put his hands on the and thus excuse me guys. And finally, adjust the guy in function of the toilet. Well, <laughs> if I, uh, yes, make it works. And here you go. So of course you can, uh, you can't really move the things up and down. Uh, it's just uh, the way you put the soldiers that will, uh, the yes, the, the soldiers that will determine the position of the toilet. And well, it's quite simple, but at least it looks good, and I'm sure it will look nice on some uh, battlefield between aliens and Predator soldiers, with some uh, alien soldiers trying to uh, fire uh, on some uh, uh, Predator dragons, for example. So looking good, and I think that's all, guys. So that's, that's all for my Azure Striker review uh, of the set plus is alternative model. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask them. I will happily answer them. And well, also, uh, I think that's all. So hope you enjoy. Uh, thanks you for watching. Have a nice day, and see you later for another video review. Bye bye.